Hello. This is the computer room of the London Centre of the Student Computing Service of the University. It's just part of the wide network of computers and terminals that the University maintains throughout Great Britain for the use of its students. In this programme, we hope to go beyond just broadcast technology and show you what's happening in the world of computers. Around me here, I have the Open University Student Computing Service computers, which have already been used for computer-assisted learning work, for modelling on some mathematics courses, and for statistical work on social science courses. And after examining uh, a number of possible alternatives, we decided to establish a, a, a time-sharing network with study centre terminals linked through telephone lines to central computer systems. And that was quite an innovative step in 1970. Now, the rapid development of the microchip makes personalised small computers in the home a possibility. Several million of these were sold in America last year. John Leszczynski of the Technology Faculty demonstrates one of these inexpensive machines and describes its range of applications. This is one of those small home computers. The programme that I'm going to be running is similar to one that our Technology Foundation course students use at the moment demonstrate the equations of motion and to see how, as he alters the inputs to such equations, he will change the method of movement of his module. Of course, many educational applications don't require the full power of a computer. This is a perfectly ordinary audio cassette, but the signals recorded on it are rather unusual. They enable this cassette to contain a complete audiovisual teaching package using sound and pictures like this one on the screen of my TV set. I've actually had to stop the tape to show this static picture, but to illustrate the system in action, let me swap to a language teaching tape which we've made. I'll just clean the screen first. Le problème la Obviously, you cannot simply play an audio cassette directly into a TV set. The box that enables us to link the two was developed at the OU. We called it Cyclops. Inside the box is a memory and a microcomputer. The memory stores a whole screen full of information under the control of the cassette tape. Now I can write on there and correct it. Now, that's the sort of thing you can do with this light pen, but you can actually send that signal down a telephone line. And let me show you how that might work. Let's see if there's somebody on the end. Hello? 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 Oh, David, it's Graham. Uh, uh, are you all fixed up for your meeting in Bedford this week? No, I've never been there before, actually, so if you could explain how I get there, that would be very useful. OK, fine, I'll try and draw your little map. I'll have to clear the screen, I've got something on this end. You're all fixed up at your end, are you? Yes, I'm all connected. Right. Um, not really, no, you have to go around the block, because... Uh, let me just wipe that over. Uh, you can't go that way. Uh, you have to go round that way because of the one-way system and in there. I see. Can you tell me is there any way to park round there? The third mode of operation of Cyclops is to use it as a computer terminal and to do this you need a phone and you need a keyboard. I thought rather than do some sums I'd use it to show you the new Prestel system developed by the post office. Prestel is a system which enables someone at home to get information out of large data banks. At the OU, we hope to use such a system to give students access to up-to-date information relating to progress, stop presses, etc. Anyway, let me dial in some of the OU information. This is actually a page of information I've put in to illustrate how the Cyclops system works. Um, I can go on and get some more pages. L let me get a page on how Prestel itself works. You can see that in addition to letters and numbers, there's some graphics on here, and I've got a few more pages. Each of the developments which we've shown you so far offer substantial benefits to Open University students. Ideally, of course, one would like to use a system which combined the best features of them all. The one which goes furthest towards accomplishing this is the sophisticated computer-based educational system, Plato. We asked Carl Gill of Control Data to demonstrate one of its lessons for us. I press the help key on this terminal keyboard. We'll see the options that are available to us from this page for a lesson called Zero Distill, which is a fractional distillation experiment. What this experiment does is allows us to assemble the apparatus piece by piece. There you can see the authors. 
And once we've assembled this apparatus, we're then given a 50-50 mixture of pentane and hexane and asked to distill these. Um, we're allowed to take up to 10 fractions of this particular compa uh, component, and the objective is to take at least 40 mils of each with a purity of 95%. So let's start straight away by assembling the apparatus. And the first thing we do is we use a touch-sensitive screen to touch the flask and add the flask to the bottom of the fractional column. After that, we can touch the oil bars, and we can add the oil bars to the flask. Then we'll uh, take the condenser, and we'll put the condenser onto the fractional column. As you can see, every response is going from my finger and applying to the screen. Then we'll take the collecting vessel, and we'll put that on the end of the adapter. And then we'll take one of the thermometers, and we'll put it into the oil bath. Plato has left the other from the thermometer for us to put in the top of the apparatus. Now, Plato is adding the 50-50 mixture for us of pentane and hexane, and it's quizzing us as to what we want to do next, current temperature. And as you can see, the temperature right now is 20 degrees, and obviously not warm enough to allow distillation to take place. To get the experiment to work, we merely touch the word warm, and every time we touch warm, we get an increase in the temperature. And eventually, when we get somewhere in the region of 50 degrees, we will see the distillation has started. And you will see in the receiver the distillate being collected, and on the graph at the side, um, a, a scale of the amount collected. Now, if we should overdo this temperature, as you can see, it's at 65, 70. The effect is that we actually blow the experiment up, but it's only a simulator. It's not like it's an expensive piece of apparatus. The Control Data Institute in London is the education subsidiary of Control Data Corporation, who have developed the Plato system over the past 15 years. It is being used successfully in many American schools and universities, where students have already logged more than 4 million hours of study. Rather, it should serve to create more contact between the university and the student.